I'd like to talk to you today about some important risks associated with climate change, but also about some opportunities that arise to address those risks with the help of nature. Now, I think that many people see themselves as standing apart from nature and that they don't really appreciate the importance of biodiversity to their lives. However, with only a moment's reflection, I think we can all understand just how fundamental biodiversity is to all of us. So photosynthesis, for example, produces and refreshes all the atmospheric oxygen upon which, of course, we all depend. So uh, biodiversity and natural ecosystems provide us with the air we breathe, but also with clean water, with uh, fertile soils, with pollination, and much, much more. And I think it's fair to say that uh, despite our many technological achievements, uh, biodiversity has been, is, and will continue to be really the foundation for human civilization. Okay, it is true that we do replace uh, many uh, uh, ecosystem services uh, with ventures of our own, particularly when we're trying to scale up production. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make here that there are endless studies which demonstrate just how important, how valuable and irreplaceable biodiversity is to our lives. So it's a real pity, therefore, to see how shabbily we treat nature and ecosystems. Uh, we're not very good at dealing with our waste products, and we destroy natural ecosystems uh, very commonly, simply because they have no value in the financial and accounting systems that we've established. We now face uh, an unprecedented threat from climate change, about which you uh, have all heard. Uh, but this is not panning out in the linear way I think we perhaps anticipated. Instead, we're getting more infrequent, uh, or rather more unpredictable, uh, weather, which leads to some of the catastrophes that we've seen, uh, but also to some more insidious effects. Uh, and it appears that wild animals and plants and ecosystems are struggling to adapt to these new conditions, perhaps because uh, the changes are taking place relatively quickly. But it also has to be uh, um, accepted that we as human society are struggling to get to grips with the unpredictable weather and extreme weather events. Now, normally, we deal with these environmental problems through regulation or through tax or through innovative new markets or perhaps through voluntary measures such as certification. But at the moment, the reality is that this is really uh, proving insufficient for the purpose. Natural hazards, which uh, we believe are a result of climate change, are increasing. And the insurance industry itself has charted a 200% increase in weather-related catastrophes between 2008 and 2012. If we look at last year, uh, 2013, we saw a number of these catastrophes taking place both in rich and in poor countries alike. Uh, and to some extent, it's the pressure to ensure against these events, which is also leading to pressure to address some of the underlying hazards and risks. Uh, and I think that this is going to be very important to us. So, uh, many ecosystems, like marshes, but also mangroves and others, are very good at protecting against floods and storm surges and so on. And we think we should be looking upon these as a kind of green infrastructure that we can roll out to supplement our more traditional ways of dealing with these problems. Um, and natural ecosystems have a number of advantages in this regard. First of all, uh, actually, it's relatively cheap on some occasions to use them. But also, of course, they absorb and sequester carbon themselves, thereby mitigating against the underlying problem, which is, uh, of course, climate change. Now, this is not something theoretical. This is being applied in a practical way. For example, on the Louisiana coast, where the aim is to protect New Orleans through man-made barriers, but also through systems uh, of uh, restored ecosystems, wetlands, marshes, and so on. But uh, it seems to me that even though we have some working examples and we have the interest of the insurance industry, this is not really feeding into better management systematically for ecosystems. Indeed, the science which we produce at our centre shows that ecosystems are being degraded and destroyed at ever-increasing rates. So this leads to the question, um, how do we persuade society to take this more seriously and to invest in the management of ecosystems uh, as an adaptation strategy and a risk reduction strategy. 
uh, and perhaps more specifically, is it possible for us to encourage the insurance industry to take into account the health and the management of specific ecosystems when they're looking to assess insurance premiums? Uh, we think that there are ways of doing this, but I'd be interested to hear what you think. Thank you.